Welcome back to Living Local. It is Fire Prevention Week, a time to raise awareness about fire safety and to help ensure that your home and your family is prepared in case of an emergency. Today, we're at the Davenport Fire Department Central Station to learn more. I'm now joined by Zach Solis. He is Lieutenant Fire Marshal here at the Davenport Fire Department. Zach, thank you so much for letting us stop by. I'm glad you guys did, thanks. So we're here at the Central Fire Department. So can you walk us through the different parts of the station? Right, um, Central Fire Station is our administrative station um, located downtown. It's one of our one of two two-story fire stations that we have. And we're currently in the remodeled portion that's the admin uh, section of, of Central. And there's a lot of history behind this fire there, station. That's right. Um, Central Station was uh, built in 1901. It is the oldest active firehouse west of the Mississippi River. Um, they chose to remodel it, um, make the upstairs an admin office, um, and then add on to it. And that completed in 2016. And that's where the crews are responding and, and living out of the quarters now. Well, it is a phenomenal facility, and we're actually going to get to take a tour today. Uh, what are the different places that we're going to see? So we're in our classroom now where we can do a lot of um, classroom studies, um, company-based things that go on in that nature. Uh, we have actual living quarters, which have a kitchen, a lounge, um, a workout area, bedrooms. So that's the kind of uh, the house style part of things. And then we have our apparatus base. So that's where all the rigs um, respond from, and we'll be taking a peek at all that stuff. Fantastic. What are the other fire stations in Davenport? Okay, we have seven fire stations total. Um, this will be an admin. The next one is station three. Um, that's our training station. Station four takes care of all of our run audits. We do uh, 16,500 calls a year. Wow. So they have to document, go through each one of those and uh, make sure we're doing everything correctly. Station five takes care of all of our supplies. Station six is a hazmat station. Uh, station seven takes care of all of the nozzles and uh, fire hose. And finally, station eight takes care of our care of our SCBAs and air packs. Wow, a lot of different roles from all the seven different stations. Uh, I know that this probably depends on what station that they're at and what the day brings, but what does a typical day or shift look like for a firefighter? Right, so with 16,500 runs in a year, we average about 45 calls a day. No two calls are ever the same. 70% um, of what we do are medical calls. So whenever you see a fire engine or fire truck respond on an ambulance, we're doing the same skill sets they are. But then we're also responding to everything else, structure fires, vehicle fires, investigations, all those things. Well, a, lot, a large variety of responses there. So part of your mission is protect life and property through education and prevention. So what are some important fire safety tips, tips that we should know when it comes to smoke detectors? Uh, smoke detectors, um, uh, the easiest tips is uh, changing those batteries and checking them twice a year. That's during daylight savings. So this November, um, that first weekend, we want to make sure when we're changing our clocks and changing the times, um, we're checking those batteries and replacing them if needed. Um, kitchen safety is a huge one. So we want to make sure that when we're cooking, um, that we're, we're staying in the kitchen, being responsible, taking all those things in consideration. The number one um, response we have for residential structure fires is based off kitchen fires. So educating the public on those needs is very important for us. Wow, that is so important to know. Uh, what is the theme this year for Fire Prevention Week? Putting me on the spot here. <laughs> so, not, uh, not every hero wears a cape. Practice and learn your escape. So with that, uh, we discuss what are called Edith drills, exit drills in the home. So we want to educate um, the community and uh, especially uh, the, the kids in the community, the students, about having two means of egress, how to get out of their house, what are your two options, and then after that, where do you meet, um, the accountability that takes place, calling 911, all those little aspects. But we want to make sure that you get out of your house and practice those exit drills. Zach, what will the Davenport Fire Department be doing for community outreach during Fire Prevention Week? So we have um, eight engines, three trucks. We have three shifts that turns into now 11, I'm sorry, 33 pieces of equipment for each shift. So each one of those companies is assigned a school and they give a school talk. So they contact the schools, uh, the crew will respond to that school or daycare and give a, a school presentation some type of um, education appropriate for, for the kids, um, touring the fire truck, watching us put on our gear, or maybe somebody else, and then talking about those safety tips we talked about. And why do you think that is so important to be out there in the community, especially with kids, educating them on fire safety? What we're doing is not all about response. How we can prevent fires, how we can educate people about safety concerns, it's such a priority for us. Um, it works for us, to our benefit, 
And it truly works for the, for the public to let them know that, hey, we're involved, we want to keep you safe, and here are our suggestions. Definitely. And, and I'm curious, what can we do as community members to make your job as a firefighter easier? Oh, man. Um, just being aware. Maybe it's as simple as uh, when you're driving and that fire engine or fire truck's coming with lights and sirens. Um, just pulling over to the side safely. Not saying I'm going to try to get to my intersection because you don't know where we're going. Um, understanding that, you know, um, those situations we're in, um, they're, they're intense. And when we go to these calls, um, being the extra bystander maybe is not what we need. Giving us some space, giving those patients some privacy is a huge concern. All right, now we're going to get instruction on how to properly use a fire extinguisher. Zach, what are the steps? All right, it's very simple. We use a very simple, simple acronym to remember how to use an extinguisher. These extinguishers are everywhere we're at, where we shop, where we eat. Um, so why not know how to use them? You can buy them for home use yourself. So this extinguisher is like uh, many you'll see out there in public. Um, the simple acronym we use is PASS. PASS. Pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. All right. So Simple enough. A, it is. We have a <laughs> pin in place, so the idea is to pull that pin out. Okay. Okay. After that, what we're doing is aiming the nozzle. Okay, and we want to aim this at the seat of the fire, the lowest spot of the fire to put that fire out. Now that the pin's out, the next, the S is for squeeze. Okay. And that's this handle here. Okay. All right. By squeezing that, that's going to discharge a dry chemical agent to put a fire out. And finally, that last S is sweep, and that's sweeping back and forth. We're kind of applying a blanket to smother this fire and to cool it and extinguish it. Awesome. Pass. Pull. Pull, aim, and squeeze, squeeze, and sweep. Fantastic. You're ready to roll. <laughs> I'm a pro. So with this, what we do when we educate uh, either students, um, recently we've been to all the high schools and uh, gave some information out there, cooking classes about you know, career talk, um, kitchen safety, and then how to use the extinguisher. And at many companies will go to and talk about this training aspect because they have extinguishers in their place of work. So we use this Bullock system. It's a very safe environment to do this in. We right. can do this anywhere. And we'll just demonstrate this as a digital fire that pops up. This is so cool. And when that fire pops up is. then, we want uh, you to understand that you want to be a good five to eight feet from the fire. Okay. By grabbing the extinguisher that you will find in your building, know where your exit's at. You'll go through the acronym of pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Try to extinguish the fire and then safely leave. And that's what this is all about. So as a demonstration, if I had the extinguisher, okay. I would pull the pin, I would aim at the seat of the fire, I'm going to squeeze the nozzle and sweep back and forth. Oh, wow. Now if I don't do it properly, that fire could go back up. Okay. Okay. So it can identify if you're doing it correctly. That's then. right. Mm -hmm. So then the, the idea is, is to keep that going. Putting that fire out. And you'll notice with this extinguisher, that laser, it might start flashing here when it stops. It gets a little softer in sound. Right. And that's truly how much time you would have with an extinguisher of this size. A 2A 10BC extinguisher will give you about 15 to 20 seconds to put a fire out. So it's very important to understand those steps, uh, to be aware of it, to be safe by knowing that I'm gonna keep a good distance, try to extinguish the fire, but whether or not we do, we get out and then we call 91. Mm -hmm. Perfect, well, Zach, thanks so much for the instruction. No problem. All right, guys, for more information, you visit ourquadcities.com. More Living Local continues after the break. Stay with us.